Tonight, the details continue to develop around the school shooting in Uvalde. President Joe Biden and the First Lady are planning to visit Texas in the coming days, but an exact date hasn't yet been set. Meantime, we're hearing more from family members of the victims tonight and learning more things that happened right before the shooting. We're also learning more about the victims. 19 children, two teachers were killed in yesterday's shooting. And so far, families have released photos for most of the victims. Some victims between the ages of eight and 10 years old. One student had just attended an award ceremony. Eva Mireles is one of the teachers who was killed. Now, her daughter shared a statement calling her mom a hero. Adeline Ruiz posted the message on social media saying, quote, Mom, I have no words to describe how I feel right now, tomorrow, and for the rest of my life. She went on to say, quote, I want you to come back to me, Mom. I miss you more than words can explain. Now, our Steve Spreester is in downtown Uvalde tonight where our community is in mourning, and we're also hearing from the families of the victims tonight, Steve. You know, Stephanie, in many ways, this is a community that's dealing with things they have never had to deal with before. Of course, that mass horrific shooting inside a classroom at Robb Elementary, not far from where I'm standing in the heart of downtown Uvalde. They've had to deal with a crush of media and they are dealing with a lot of questions tonight about exactly what happened and about the confusion right after that mass shooting. And one of the people with a lot of questions tonight is a grandmother, Rosa Maria Ramirez. She heard about the shooting in Uvalde, but had no idea that her 10 year old granddaughter, Alethea, was one of the 19 people who were shot and killed. She talked to ABC News today about the confusion. She went to the Civic Center down the street from where I'm standing right now, looking desperately for her granddaughter, but she wasn't there. Listen. So if she's not there, where is she? They wouldn't, they wouldn't tell us that she was, all this time, she had, they had her little body right there, in there, all those little kids in there. They didn't let us know till midnight. Alethea Ramirez, just 10 years old. Her grandmother, very proud of her, says she was a very talented little girl who loved to draw. She says the last time she saw Alethea on Mother's Day, she was in a desperate search when she heard the worst possible news. Now, among her many questions have to do with the alleged shooter. How can they let an 18 year old buy guns, especially those guns that he had? Wouldn't they have any questions? Why would he buy them? Outside of Robb Elementary, as the day has gone by, more and more flowers have been dropped off. I talked to a couple of lifetime residents of Uvalde who were bringing flowers. They knew the grandmother of the alleged shooter who was shot. They also knew one of the girls who was the victim. And you find that story over and over again here in Uvalde, a very tight knit community. People know everyone that was involved in this accident, in, excuse me, involved in this incident, this horrific incident, and they are reaching out to each other to help. And these two lifelong residents, all they wanted to do was drop off flowers in remembrance of the 19 children and the two teachers that died. A lot of questions, as I said, around this shooter are John Paul Barajas following the investigation into this shooter. He joined us outside the store where investigators say that gunman purchased those weapons. John Paul. Steve, that's right. As time passes, we're learning more details about the days that led up to this mass shooting, as well as the moments during and after. According to DPS director Steve McCraw, the shooter illegally bought the semi-automatic rifle here on May 17th, just days after turning 18. The following day, he bought 375 rounds of ammunition. On the 20th, he came back to Oasis Outback and bought a second semi-automatic rifle. Then just four days later came the carnage. McCraw saying the shooter shot his grandmother in the face. We are hearing she is still alive. The shooter then drove away and crashed near Rive Elementary. Investigators say he was confronted by law enforcement but managed to get in through a back door. He opened fire, killing 19 kids and two adults.
in these horribly dark days, we see the best in humanity, the best in people, and that's certainly been the case here in Uvalde and across South Texas in the form of blood donations. All over South Texas and right here in the wake of devastation, people are coming together to help by donating blood. So much so that some had to be turned away. Try to donate blood. They were not accepted anymore, overfilled, super happy about it. Everywhere is full, which is amazing because um, they did have a blood shortage yesterday. These two women, a few of the many that weren't able to donate. Instead, they made signs. Uvalde strong and remember their names, their messages. This is our way of just making sure everyone knows that we're thinking about them. It's sad. No child, nobody, no matter what the age, should have to go through something like this. It's just evil. That's what it is. It's pure evil. According to Francine Pina with South Texas Blood and Tissue, they started seeing people for donations at 9 at the Herbie Ham Activity Center. By 9.30, they were at capacity for the two buses they brought down. The um, response was overwhelming. Um, we saw people coming in from Del Rio, Eagle Pass, um, of course here Uvalde, um, Sabinal, uh, surrounding communities. Uh, we saw over 125 donors here today. We she adds, in South Texas, they collected over a thousand units of blood today, and their appointments are also booked through next Wednesday. If you were turned away. She adds, no matter the outpouring of support that we're seeing right now, there will always be a need for blood donations. She said she recommends making an appointment, but if you would like to help out sooner, they are having another blood drive at the Hermingham Activity Center tomorrow at 9 a.m. If you decide to go to that, it is re recommended to show up as soon as possible because they probably will have to cut people off at a certain point. In Uvalde, John Paul Barajas, KSAT, 12 News. Thank you, John Paul. And certainly there is an outpouring of support among the people in the line, like you said, people from San Antonio, Eagle Pass, people from, of course, Uvalde, wanting to donate blood, wanting to help in any way they can. Remember their names. Uvalde Strong seems to be a lot of what we have seen in some of the signs around the city. We've also seen one word that has come up again and again, pray. More than 2,000 people actually took part in a prayer vigil that filled the Uvalde County Fairplex today for an interfaith vigil put on by the Baptist Temple Church in Uvalde. Texas Governor Greg Abbott was there, United States Senator Ted Cruz was there, and Democratic candidate for Governor Beto O'Rourke was also there. Our Patty Santos was also at the Fairplex tonight as people took part, came together to pray for healing. Patty. Yeah, Steve, this community is looking for the why. Why did this happen? What can they do for the families? Are there any words? And there aren't, but take a listen. This was inside the Fairplex. It was filled to the max. It was standing room only. People of all ages just really felt the need to come out and support the families and those that are hurting. And they wanted to pray and just hold each other. Pastor Tony Gruber with Baptist Temple Church read Psalms 46, reminding this town that God is still with them. He says there's no answers. There's no words that can be said that are enough to stop the aching hearts tonight, but Uvalde is standing together. I pray that God will give them the strength to get through it, and it's difficult. I know, it's, it's hard. I can't imagine what they're feeling. We're here, and we're praying for them. That it's not, to me, it's like it's not enough. I just, that we're just here for them and that we're together. And you know, what was so heartbreaking about this vigil tonight is that there were so many children that were grieving the loss of their classmates, some of them holding signs with the names of the victims, other children so innocent and unaware of the tragedy that their community is enduring at this time. And I got to tell you something, this community has been so graceful. It's taken this pain with such a dignity. There are so many media from around the world uh, just surrounding this community, but this town, this community has shown nothing but kindness to all of these strangers. Steve. 
I can just echo that so well, Patty. As a matter of fact, when we were doing our five o'clock live shot, not far from where we're standing right now, a uh, local resident of Uvalde came out with cinnamon rolls that she baked and was offering them to people that were in the park, media, people that had the signs that said, remember their names. She just came out and thought people could use a cinnamon roll. That's among the spirit of Uvalde and the coming together of this community. There are also so many people in San Antonio that are trying to help out. We told you the police department had units here. The fire department still has personnel here. I actually saw a San Antonio fire department ambulance passed just before we took this live shot. But there are also people that are just dropping everything and coming here to help, including Josh Palacios. He owns the El Remedio taco trucks that you see throughout San Antonio, including downtown. He dropped everything, jumped in his truck, pulled down to the Civic Center and put up a sign that said free tacos. Here's why he said he came. Down. We're here because, um, you know, it hits home. I have two daughters of my own, both middle schoolers, um, you know, and we're here to give back. You know, we're here to be with the people from Uvalde. Um, I feel like it's our priority to be here and support them during these difficult times. We also know that there was a nursing association that came that baked cookies and took them to Uvalde Memorial Hospital, where some of these little victims are still being treated after that shooting. We also know that Chris Madrid's food truck, the burger joint in San Antonio, I actually passed that food truck as I was coming into town. They were feeding first responders not far from the ditch where they pulled the gunman's truck out where he allegedly crashed got out and exchanged gunfire before he went to that elementary school. What is really apparent down here is that Uvalde is a strong, resilient community, but that they are also realizing very clearly tonight that they are not alone. Stephania, back to you in San Antonio. All right, Steve, thank you for that. You know, in the wake of this horrific school shooting, you're probably wondering, how can I help? Well, in addition to giving blood, you can also donate to the official funds that were set up to help the families of the school shooting victims. And we have those official funds listed for you on KSAT.com. All you have to do is look for the article that we're showing you on this screen. Click on it. Our coverage of the Uvalde school shooting continues after the break. The investigation into the Uvalde school massacre continues. Governor Greg Abbott held a press conference saying that there was very little warning as to what was about to take place. He also said that investigators are still trying to figure out more information about the alleged shooter. Reportedly, there has been no criminal history identified yet. He may have had a juvenile record, but that is yet to be determined. There was no known mental health history of the gunman. The governor said that local officials told him that the community has a problem with mental health. As we've reported, the gunman in this case bought two assault rifles within days of each other before that shooting took place. The governor also spoke about legislation that he signed into law that puts more responsibility onto school districts to put active shooter protocols into place. And, you know, the country continues to deal with mass shootings. Between 2009 and 2020, the five deadliest mass shootings involve the use of assault weapons and or high-capacity magazines. And that's according to research from the Gun Violence Prevention Organization. Every town. Now, Governor Greg Abbott said that an AR-15 was used in this particular shooting. And through its research of mass shootings, every town, that organization I just told you about, says that six times as many people are shot when assault weapons are used in mass shootings. Every town says that semi-automatic firearms are designed to fire rounds at a greater velocity than most other firearms. So naturally, when something like this happens, what happens after that? Well, the debate over gun laws, right? That came back into focus after gubernatorial candidate Beto O'Rourke confronted Governor Greg Abbott today at his press conference. Listen. Totally predictable when you sir, you're out of line. Sir, sir, you're out of line. Please leave this auditorium. 
Now, Beto O'Rourke says that Abbott and other lawmakers need to take more action on gun control. He said that legislation that would require universal background checks or enact red flag laws, safe storage locks, or the banning of assault rifles have all been passed up. We recently saw mass shootings in El Paso, Santa Fe High School, and Sutherland Springs. Also new tonight, the NAACP sent a letter to Governor Greg Abbott, and it's calling on the governor not to attend this week's National Rifle Association conference. The group is urging the governor to enact, quote, gun control measures in your state that will save countless innocent lives, including those of children, end quote. Everywhere you went tonight, you could feel a lot of emotion, especially at a vigil for the shooting victims at Main Plaza. People there were hugging each other, they were praying, and they stood in silence as the bell rang in honor of those shooting victims. Oh, that bell rang once every minute for the 21 victims killed. Some people took the opportunity to protest gun policy. Others said that more should be done about mental health, but others took the time to mourn together. It's all of us in it together, and that is uh, it just lifts my spirits a little bit. And, you know, it doesn't fix the problem, but it does make it feel, you know, a lot easier to tackle when there's more people to help. And you saw that many people were leaning on each other for support during this very difficult time. We continue to remember the victims in this shooting online, KSAT.com. We're releasing pictures and stories about those victims as the information continues to come into our newsroom. Our team is updating articles, especially that one that you see on your screen as we get new information. You can follow this coverage online at KSAT.com.